she sold her 911 Porsche. She discontinued her creator supercharged mastermind, scaled down her seven figure business, retired Boss Graham Academy. Man, what the this be crazy. But Vanessa is smart. It really confirmed one thing for me. In this week's podcast, I'm going to talk about Vanessa Lau sabbatical posts, how she's making a decision to take a long extended break from work. She discontinued her creator supercharged mastermind, scaled down her seven figure business and retired Boss Graham Academy just to figure out what she wants to do in life. Let's get into it. So initially for this week, I actually had something a little bit different planned for the podcast, but this morning when I opened up my email, I saw a huge bomb from Vanessa Lau and she publicly, publicly announced that she's taking a break, a sabbatical away from her business and dissolved most of her team. Basically a long term work break. She discontinued her creator supercharged mastermind. Uh, she scaled down her multi seven figure business. She's retiring her Boss Graham Academy and she stepped down from all her speaking engagements. Plus, she sold her 911 Porsche for Jeep Wrangler. Last one, definitely the biggest surprise. But on a serious note, it was actually relatively kind of sudden. I met Vanessa in real life at her supercharged mastermind event in LA last December. If you see some of the clips, the shorts on her um, thing, you might see me in the behind the scenes with the phone. Uh, for me at the time, I know how anxiety producing a new launch or a new program can be. So I just offered to shoot the behind the scenes for her, um, given my YouTube background and all that for free. It was really cool not only getting to know her and meeting her in real life, but I also got to meet a lot of her staff, uh, the team behind the scenes and her coaches too, and everyone at the mastermind who is really, really cool. Honestly, I haven't met a community where I felt so comfortable before. It's kind of funny, I've been following Vanessa for a few years now, ever since she was at 1,000 subscribers for uh, YouTube, and we have a bunch of mutual friends and the Asian communities, pretty, pretty small. Anyways, after meeting Vanessa in real life, something I admire her on a business level is her level of of intentionality i don't even know if that's a word and um her vision from the outside point of view it always looked like she knew what she was doing and that's something like i wish that i had and something that i learned at her mastermind is she spends a crazy amount of time for thinking time and strategy she knows her role in the business she protected her time as the strategist the thinker the thought leader whereas like for me i've always been kind of scattered all over the place i'm the one producing i'm the one editing i'm doing all these things but it was really cool kind of seeing vanessa's progress where everybody just protected that role for her so her vision planning is like next level and on a personal level something i really love about vanessa is how warm and vulnerable she is in just real life um when we met each other she was just so trusting i'm not sure if it's because we had mutual friends but um it wasn't just her like her whole community like her whole team including her ops manager kylie and um just everyone's supporting her too and something else i also admire is her, her level of transparency with her business the lessons she's learning the mistakes that she's making and it's something to be admired with that said i actually when i first found out the news i was a bit shocked that she made this decision like after getting a glimpse of behind the scenes and how she plans and all that I was like, man, I would have expected her to plan this out six months out or a year out, but Vanessa is smart. And I think there are valuable lessons about doing what she did, knowing when to quit, uh, intentionality, and the courage to really to do what's best for yourself. So with that being said, let's go into the few lessons I pulled from her post that she dropped. Lesson one, on the outside, quitting seems crazy. So it was really funny. One thing I also like about Vanessa is that she's kind of sassy. After reading her email and the, the first thing that she wrote was like, man, what the f this bee be crazy. <laughs> and of course she censors out the bitch part, but at least again, you gotta love her. So in her email, she actually shares her experience back in corporate in 2018, right before she left to do the whole YouTube thing and how all her colleagues, her inner, her circle of friends around her were just shocked. Not the shock that she made the decision, but they were shocked about the timing of the decision, which was really interesting. She mentioned uh, how she just got her promotion, how the people were saying like, you're such an all-star. I really thought you would, you would have climbed your way to the top. You were so close. Fast forward today with her YouTube, it feels very, very similar. 
She mentioned getting the major speaking engagements. Uh, recently, I saw that she spoke with the Hormozies and Gary V. She mentioned hitting the 500K months and being so close to the 1 million mark for YouTube. But I think a lot of times, me included, we get stuck in the sunk cost fallacy. This is the fallacy or phenomenon where people are reluctant to abandon a strategy or course of action because they invested heavily in it even when it's clear that abandonment would be more beneficial. A lot of times for me personally, a lot of people ask me like, dude, you got your pharmacy degree. Why wouldn't you continue pharmacy at that point? But much like my experience and what they don't see, uh, and what she talks about in her post, she was losing control of her mental health and life. Instead of living her life, she noticed she was building a business around the life that she wanted to live, which was completely backwards. As someone who saw like, kind of like the behind the scenes of her preparing for the mastermind and helping her prep. I will say that she spends an insane amount of time about like planning and thinking about how can I deliver for these people. I don't want to let these people down. She puts so much pressure on herself to deliver so much value. And what I realized in that moment is like, we're actually not that different. I know the pressure of like not wanting to let people down as a chronic people pleaser like myself and the history with that. I just related to that. And I'm not sure if it's like the Asian mentality of like not letting the people around you down. For me, I also felt very similar with my YouTube, a pharmacy YouTube and leaving farm my career as a pharmacist in general. And maybe hate is the wrong word, but I remember asking myself, even though I'm good at this field and I've dedicated years to it, is this a game even worth playing, even if I don't enjoy it? And something as I reflect too is like Vanessa actually knew when to quit. She actually quit, quoted this book by Annie Duke titled Quit with this quote, quitting on time will usually feel like quitting too early. If you quit on time, it's not going to seem like anything particularly dire is happening at that particular moment. That's because quitting is being able to glimpse at the range of ways the future might play out and see that likelihood that things will turn out poorly is too high to make it worth your while to continue. Now that we have an inkling of like that we want to quit, when do you actually do it? And that brings me to the second lesson from her post, knowing when to quit. Personally for me, I've always kind of struggled knowing when to quit, not only with my business, not only with my pharmacist life, but also like my romantic life too, with my relationships. I. You know, I, I, for some reason I hate losing. Well, I shouldn't put it like this. I don't hate losing, but that loss, I fight so hard for it. And maybe it's because of my own insecurities of like, maybe I'll never see it again. That's how I internally feel. And something that I've actually struggled with my pharmacy career and uh, even as a YouTuber and inbound sales strategist is being busy all the time. Like I notice in those moments where I'm always running around I feel like I don't have time. Like I don't even have time to think, oh, is this something I should quit? But I think in society oftentimes rewards this behavior for overworking and burning out. But that's the exact problem. Sometimes we're just so busy that we never ask ourselves, when is it actually beneficial for us to quit? But something I've come to realize is that it's really difficult to make these decisions when you're in a survival state, when you're in a fight, flight, or freeze response. You can't think long term. You're only thinking like very short term. And sometimes those short term decisions aren't always the best for us. And something that I've learned and really um, started doing since her supercharge uh, mastermind event is prioritizing thinking time and reflection. There's a really great book. Uh, it's called The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. It was actually recommended by Vanessa's coach, George Bryant. The whole concept is smart people do dumb things. How do we reduce dumb things? Well, it's through thinking time. And the answer to, of when to quit is actually relatively simple as I'm going through Vanessa's email. It's one, noticing when you aren't happy anymore over a long duration of time. Two, it's noticing you're doing more things that you don't love to do. Three, it's noticing that you're saying yes to things you don't even want to do. But ultimately, Vanessa didn't say this, but something I noticed, it's ultimately noticing that you're entering more relationships out of resentment that don't align to your vision. And I really related to this because a few years ago, when I was getting into inbound closing, uh, taking on new clients, I left my pharmacy career. I sacrificed a lot just to dedicate to this art, right? Or this high income skill as your favorite gurus will say. I hate that term, by the way. But in my last podcast, I actually talked about how one of my biggest regrets was neglecting my romantic relationship. And in that 
podcast, I actually shared a really quick story about how, you know, that week I closed 20K in deals, which was the most I ever made at that time. But when I did that, it felt so empty because my ex broke up with me the week before and I had no one to celebrate with. I think about all the resentment I had toward my business and myself at the time. I was like, man, I was so stupid. What is this even all for? And I was carrying that energy into my business, which was in some kind of ways self-sabotaging me too. But since then, I've been really intentionally working on that and doing deep reflection about what I really wanted, my vision, and the boundaries that I neglected that I should really, really set. Because even though I told myself I wanted a business, when I actually had it, I realized this isn't actually what I want. And I just kind of relate to Vanessa as the hamster wheel is going on. She's scaling up the business. Obviously, I'm not her at her level, but I could see a situation where she's just like, is this what I really want? And that leads me to lesson number three, knowing when to quit. To be honest, I've actually never really taken a long break. I've done short getaway breaks inspired by Graham Cochran and a few other people. And it's something I do quarterly. I just try to get a hotel room, Airbnb, or just a weekend escape by myself just to relax and just think about things and just plan out my 12 weeks because I follow the 12 week year format. And actually after Vanessa's uh, supercharged mastermind event back in December, I was just really burnt out from that event. I was just listening, recording, taking a lot of mental notes. And I remember I was in like San Diego at the time and I just kind of zoned out into nature because it was this beautiful mountain view. And I just re started reflecting on all the lessons I learned from the mastermind. I started asking myself, like, what's the biggest difference between the people at this event and myself? Not in like an egotistic way, but really re taking a strong reflection. The realization that I had was that a lot of these people are very similar to me. The only difference was they protected their role as being a strategist versus being an owner operator, just being in the weeds all the time. They're not the ones editing the videos. They focused on building more leverageable systems in their business, like hiring a team. And they created a culture and found the right people to support their vision, which allowed them to compound their strategy and thinking time even more. So like they're, they're able to have better ideas. Cause I was always wondering like, why the hell am I not getting like good ideas in my business? Or how come I can't come up with these like tweetable quotes that Vanessa Hormozzi and all these other people have. And it's because I never allowed my time, allowed myself the time to actually think, but it's cool just to do the weekend escapes. But something I related on Vanessa's post was that how she never wanted to take too much time off because she had a huge team big expenses, clients and subscribers that she needed to take care of. Basically the responsibilities of her business and in her life. And that's why she dissolved majority of her business machine so she could take a break without feeling the guilt or feeling obligated to come back and just to come back on her terms when she's ready, not the other way around. I thought that was very, very interesting. She also mentioned wanting to take the time to connect to her true self, to relax, learn, just explore again her curiosities and things that she's interested in without constraints to simply just be. For the more logical people listening to this, it may sound a bit woo, but maybe one episode, another episode in the future, I'll break down the neuroscience of this. But the pattern that I noticed from a lot of top level entrepreneurs, especially Vanessa's coach, uh, George Bryan, is all the top level entrepreneurs that I've met have a sense of spirituality. And that's why we're seeing such like a huge movement of like, <sighs> ayahuasca psilocybin and even though i never straight up asked <laughs> vanessa have you ever done ayahuasca before have you ever done psychedelics before i thought it was really interesting uh behind the scenes at vanessa's mastermind she was really into kind of breath work i saw her doing a kundalini session with uh, our mutual friend ella and you can tell that she like she really protects her mental health but as i was reading this post this section of her post it really confirmed one thing for me Working harder and hustling harder is a short-term solution that leads to inevitable burnout, just like with my pharmacy career back in the day. While hard in the beginning, long-term, sometimes it's just best to walk away from what doesn't align anymore. Which leads me to this last question. How do you know what doesn't align anymore? And what does that even mean? Lesson four, prioritizing time for reflection. So I mentioned that book, The Road Less Stupid, about thinking time by Keith Cunningham and all that. But something I took away from Vanessa's mastermind was just the importance of prioritizing time for reflection. As someone who's like, I mean, 
dude, my, my blog was called refugee hustle. Right. And so I was always busy working. If you talk to most of my friends and stuff, they'll always be saying like, Kevin's always working. But a lot of that work was probably unproductive and actually had detrimental um, returns as well. And especially if you ask like the younger Kevin, like the 20 year old Kevin, even up to like just within the last few years, if you're like, hey, Kevin, would you be open to doing some thinking time? I would probably respond like this, like, I don't have time for this. But the real question I should have asked, like, I look back at now is like, can we afford not to do it? Can we continue to afford living a life that isn't aligned with us and is headed toward burnout? Because oftentimes there's compounding effects. And that last part about being aligned with the what we actually want, that misalignment causes us so much stress, so much anxiety, and is one of the major causes for burnout because it's like this internal battle of like, okay, every day I go to work as a pharmacist, but then like deep down inside, I don't want to do this. And it causes this incongruency or internal conflict. Sometimes like if you're like me and the 20 year old Kevin, it's really hard to figure it out. And Vanessa actually has really, really great questions where she asks, if you found out that you only have three years to live, what would you do differently in your life? And the second question she asked herself was, if those are decisions you make, if you found out you only had three years to live, why wouldn't you do it now? Why would you wait until you had three years to live? And if your answer is like mine and you're like, dude, I don't have a good reason, then the truth is you probably know what to do, which leaves us with the question, do we have the courage to do what's right. To be honest, the old version of myself, the pharmacist Kevin Yee, probably would have been like, hell no to these questions, right? Like, I don't have the courage. I need my nine to five job and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not telling you to leave it. Everybody's situation is different. But I will have to say, even though sometimes revenue is like all over the place, I feel a lot more aligned and I feel internally, I feel a lot less distressed about finding fulfilling work because I'm doing it. I, I feel myself moving closer and closer toward it too. And over time, it's going to change. But at the current moment, I feel very fulfilled what I do as a creator, as an inbound sales strategist. But it's something to think about as I further refine my vision, not only for my business, but my life, because I want things like a family and all that. I'm going to use these questions to re reflect on whether what I'm doing currently aligns with my life right now. And it's really interesting. Vanessa shared a lot about her answers. She would simplify. She would take a break. She would spend more time with mom and dad. She would say no to everything that didn't feel like a heck yes. She would stop caring about what everyone else thinks which led her to answer for the second question was she decided to take a sabbatical. Yeah, it was just so insightful just seeing the behind the scenes of her decision and the step-by-step -step and just her doing a post. Could have Vanessa just disappeared off the earth? Of course, you know, she's not entitled to tell us any of this, but I appreciate her so much for being so transparent about her thought process because it really helps me become a better thinker and become a better strategist. And Vanessa, if you're watching this, just know that there's so many people like myself who admire your courage who admire what you're doing and really really look up to you right after your post vanessa i got a few messages from my friends one of my friends was like that's wild given her success but good for her i've been working through burnout and just trying to figure out my next move with having little motivation if someone as successful as vanessa is leaving it all behind for her mental health that's a hard pill to swallow for someone who's still trying to get a fraction to her level totally respect her for it and proud of her for taking this step. And then one of my other friends was like, wow, I see Vanessa's on a sabbatical. So cool. I hope she figures her values out and aligns with her, her life with them. It's actually really validating because I've been working really hard to undo all the high achiever mentality. Just being happy with the level I'm working, making good amount of money, but enjoy, still enjoying life. It just goes to show you, Vanessa, that you touch so many people's lives. And even when I'm in doubt, I try a member the little thank you card that you gave me at your event. Actually, I have it here. Like, hold on, let me grab it. it says Kevin. Thank you so much for being a volunteer at our event. I'm so impressed by your big heart, determination, and passion for everything that you do. You are an incredible human being and more of this world deserves to know who you are. I'm so grateful for your support and looking forward to paying it forward to you and your business. I can't wait to see you crush it in your business and in life. 2023 is your year. With gratitude, Vanessa. <sighs> Whenever I read this card, sometimes I just need a reminder to just believe in myself, to see 
what others like you see in me. I'm working on my mental health, on being able to respect myself and value myself too. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate you always, Vanessa, and I'm proud of you and really excited for the next phase of your life. It's gonna be amazing. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Stay compassionate, stay authentic, stay rebellious. Peace.